<laughs> All right, we're good to get started. Okay, hi everybody. I'm Shannon Kendall and I work at American Crafts and I'm excited to be here with you today to do another color pour resin class. These classes are always super fun. If you've been in one of my classes before, welcome back. And if you're new, I'm gonna cover all the basics, don't worry. But those of you who are returning to the classroom today, you're gonna to learn some new techniques and have some more fun with resin and see some different ways to use this awesome product. So I am excited to just jump in and get going. So if you have any questions, Stacy's gonna interrupt me. You can ask whatever questions uh, you need to, and let's just start going. So my first thing that I like to cover when I talk about resin is how to prepare your work area. So I've covered my table with a clear tablecloth or just a plastic drop cloth. Um, I like to do that because it's easy. I can just pick up the whole thing and just swipe it away and it's gone and the mess is done when I'm all done. It protects my work surface. I always, always wear an apron. This one is well loved. You can see it's got lots of spills on it. So that's why I always wear an apron. And then you're always gonna want to wear gloves. So I have my gloves here. Some resin kits come with gloves um, or you can just use any glove that you want to. It's really sticky business working with resin. resin so you're gonna wanna cover your hands. And then for cleanup, I always keep on hand some baby wipes and some rubbing alcohol. And that is the easiest, best, fastest way to clean up any resin spills that we have. So with that said, we can kind of jump in and start. So I'm gonna put my gloves on right off, right off. Another thing with resin is you wanna work in a well-ventilated area. So either have a fan going, have your windows open, if you have, a mask, you could wear a mask. You can even wear those if you're sensitive to the smell. It is a chemical reaction that's happening. So if that chemical is, if you're sensitive to that, you can wear one of those filtration masks that really filter out the chemicals. And those work really well too. A lot of times I do wear that when I'm working in studio because I've learned I'm kind of sensitive to resin since working with it so much. And I also have learned that I do better if I wear long sleeves because my skin is super sensitive. I'm like allergic to a million kinds of soaps and all kinds of things. So I noticed I started getting a little reaction to the resin fumes on my wrists from stirring. So I always wear long sleeves, but you kind of just play that by ear. I guess I'm a, like a tiny percentage of people are allergic to resin and I just happen to be that person. So <laughs> that's why I have long sleeves today. Try not to get resin on my sweater, but okay. So starting with resin is it's got two parts. So you've got your A side and your B side of your resin. So the A side is usually the resin and the B side is what's called the resin hardener. And when these two chemicals are separate, they're really fluid and liquidy. And when they come together, a chemical reaction happens and they start to, as you combine them really thoroughly, it starts to cure and starts to harden and becomes this really hard, permanent, um, acrylic. So it's really fun to work with it and see that process. So I always label my caps AB. You can see that there. And I also label my little measuring cups that come with it A and B. And these I just wrote on it with a Sharpie and then covered it with a piece of plastic like scotch tape so that when I'm cleaning up with my alcohol, I don't rub my Sharpie off. And the reason I do that is if these two parts get together, they're gonna start to harden. And so I always like to keep my cups and my lids on the right bottles so that I don't mix that up and confuse myself and accidentally get my lid stuck to my bottle or something because I put the wrong lid on and then it cures and hardens. Okay, so we're gonna just start right off mixing. We're gonna be making, actually I'm gonna show you this first, changing my mind, midstream. So today we're gonna to be working with a few different kinds of molds. The, this mold set is the geode coaster mold and it comes with three different coasters. Two of them are solids, but the shape on the outside is different. And then this one is an open coaster mold. So see, you can see there's a, a geode. There's a hole kind of in the middle there. So we're gonna use all three of these today. And since we're making geodes, I wanted to show you how I kind of get inspiration for my geode color schemes. So I went on to Google and I just looked up some images and this kind of shows you some of the color schemes that you could do with a geode. And I think this is a great way if you're nervous about combining too many colors to get some inspiration straight from nature. 
that show you the things that work well together. So I love this one up here in all the blues. This is what we're gonna work with today. Um, this one is reds, grays. You can see all the different tones. And you can also kind of get a feel of, um, from looking at actual geodes or quartz or you can kind of see how the lines are flowing and that's how we're gonna pour our resin. So there's all different kinds of color combinations that you can get by just looking at nature and seeing how nature forms these beautiful rocks on their own. And then we'll try to duplicate that. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. All right, for mixing, we're gonna do a new technique that I haven't shown before that's called an ink drop technique. Well, that's what I call it. I don't know its official name, but <laughs> that's what I call it. So I'm gonna just start out by mixing two parts of resin. So I'm going to do this coaster pretty full. So I'm going to, I want to fill it for this first layer that we're going to ink drop into. I'm going to fill it about mm, three fourths the way full, maybe two thirds the way full. So I'm just going to fill these cups all the way up to the top. So it's equal parts, A and B. So when you go to the top, it's super easy, but these cups also have little measurements on the side. So if I'm doing a smaller batch, you can see that I'll kind of get down on the side and look to see and make sure that they're the same, but they have the little measurements there for you. Or you can use a silicone measuring cup. Those are really nice because they're easy to clean out. Just do equal parts. So I've got both my parts, A and B, whoop, all the way to the top of my lid. Okay, now I've just grabbed another little plastic cup to mix into and then a stir stick. These, actually I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna use this stir stick. So the, the resin at Michael's comes with these little craft sticks in the box, but you can use any craft sticks. And I'm gonna also show you some really awesome color pour resin silicone tools that we have that I love using for all different kinds of things. But when I'm scraping my cup, I kind of like this really stiff craft stick. Okay, so I'm putting all of part A Then you can see why I labeled it, right? Because now I don't have to wash that out and I can use it again with part A and not worry that it's gonna start to harden. And here's all of part B right on top. And I really scrape my sides because I wanna try to keep it as equal parts as possible. That's when you're gonna get a better hardening, a better cure. Okay, so now this will be the longest three minutes of your life. Now it just feels like it sometimes, but we're wanting to stir this and incorporate it together. And you can kind of see that I'm getting some cloudy streaks in there. I don't know if you can see it through my cup or down through the top. Can you see those cloudy streaks moving around? Yep. So that is the two parts of resin. So if you have those clouds, then it's not thoroughly mixed yet. And the reason that I say this takes a long time is that I am like a go, go, go crafter and I just like to hurry up and, and get going, right? And this, if you stir it slowly, you'll get better results. You can kind of see I'm already getting some bubbles in there a little bit, so I might be stirring too fast. You have to go really slow. There are some tricks to get rid of those bubbles, so it's not the end of the world if they get in there, but if I was just to go super fast and stir it super fast, you can imagine all of the air bubbles that I'd be trapping in there. Are there any questions maybe, Stacy? Because this is gonna take a few minutes. Uh, hi, Shannon. Yeah, so Pat asks, asks if you could repeat the, the part about the A and the B labeling. Sure. So I just took a Sharpie marker and labeled the tops of my caps with the Sharpie, just A and B. And then on my measuring cups, it comes with multiple cups. And so I measured, I again took my Sharpie and just wrote A and B on each cup. And then I covered it up with a piece of scotch tape just to protect it. Because later, if I want to clean those with alcohol, alcohol takes the Sharpie right off and I won't maintain my labeling. So I just covered it with a piece of tape. And that way I keep my A always in my A cup and my B always in my B cup and the lids on the correct bottles. So they don't accidentally get some curing happening 
just because of cross-contamination across parts A and B. So that's why I do that. Perfect, thank you. And then Krista- You're welcome. Krista asked, do you prefer a specific brand of epoxy? You know, this was the one from Michael's. It's the amazing clear class. I think it's um, a malachite or a malicite clear cast. And I like it a lot. I also like um, American Crafts makes color pour resin. And I like it. It's really good, high quality resin. Um, the spinet resin also works for what we're doing today, which is the We Are Spinet tumblers that you do with epoxy. And I've used that as well. It isn't quite as um, clear, I've found, as this one is from Michael's or as the Color Pour resin is. So those two are my top, top favorites, but in a pinch, I've used the spinet resin and it works really great too. It, cr it actually cures faster, the spinet resin does. So if you are up against a time crunch, that's a good one for you. Because this resin cure time is 12 to 24 hours. So we're gonna do some movie magic today so that you can see unmolding. But normally when you're working with resin, this is kind of a weekend project or a project you do like while you're doing other things on the side because it does have that curing time that you need to allow for each layer that you cure. Okay, I'm starting to get clearer. I don't know if you can see, see how those streaks are all gone? I've got some bubbles, but mostly the streaks are gone. So I'm gonna make sure I got all the resin off the sides and bottom of my cup <clears throat> just by scraping that craft stick around in there really good. Sometimes I'll also see if I have a good mix by lifting my craft stick up and kind of looking at how it's flowing off the stick and if it's clear. If you under mix, it probably won't cure completely hard because you'll have these weird spots that are still soft where the chemicals didn't mix together. We have a couple questions on how you clean the cups after you're done. I just use a baby wipe and a little bit of rubbing alcohol. So I'll show you in at the end of the class, I'll show you, but I just squirt a little bit of rubbing alcohol in each cup and then use a baby wipe to wipe it out. That will also get resin off your hands and things if you spill it on your hands or if you get it on your table. While the resin's still wet, that will clean it off. Okay. I think we're pretty good here. I call that good. I usually kind of time myself. I glance up at a clock, but I didn't this time. So I'm just gonna go off clearness and it's pretty clear. So I'm just gonna take my craft stick out of there. Okay, and the first step for this one is we're not gonna add any dye straight to this cup. So you can do that, like you can add dyes straight in and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. But for this ink drop method, we're gonna just pour a clear layer straight into this mold. I just kind of pour it in there and let it flow to the edges. And like I said, I don't want to go all the way to the top on this one. I'm going to go about three fourths, two thirds ish. Okay, and then I'm going to hit it with the heat tool. So this is going to help me get those bubbles out. So this is just a heat tool that you can use for embossing. You can also use like a lighter, um, any heat source. This one doesn't have very much airflow, so I like it because it doesn't move the resin around too much, but it does get those bubbles to raise to the surface. So when you apply heat to it, those bubbles will come up to the surface and pop, and then you don't have any bubbles left in your mold. Okay, what I also like to do is kind of just check in there and make sure with these ge geode coaster molds, they have lots of um, ridges and small little spots around the edges. And I don't wanna get any bubbles there because then it will be like a little hole when I unmold. So this tool, this is a set of really awesome tools. I'm working white on clear on white, so I hope you can see them. But these right here are the silicone resin tools by Color Pour Resin. And they have all different types of ends. So the one I'm gonna use right now is this one with this tiny little pointed end. Or I'll hold it on my glove so you can see it. Okay, and that I just kind of take in there and I look for any bubbles that might be trapped along the bottom edge. Oh, I just found one in those little grooves of my mold. 
And I'm just going to raise them up to the top by using the tip of this silicone tool. And I found, I don't have to do this on every mold, but the ones that have all these little hiding places for bubbles to hang out, I tend to like to raise those up because then you don't want to be surprised by a little imperfection when you unmold. Okay. All right. And these you can just wipe off with a baby wipe. You don't even need the rubbing alcohol to get it off because it's just the silicone tool. So it just comes right off. They're awesome. I love them. Okay. And since I raised those bubbles up, I'm going to hit it one more time with my heat tool just to make sure they all popped when they came up. You could use a toothpick to go around the corner there, around the edges of your mold, if you don't have the silicone tools. Okay, so now for this one, what we need, what we would do in real life, we're not gonna do it right here because of movie time, but I would set this aside and I would let it cure a little bit. So for 20 to 30 minutes, I would set it aside and let it cure. And what that does is it's going to prevent when I just drop my ink straight on, we're going to just drop our color right into this mold. If it's too fluid, then it'll sink right to the bottom. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to, I would let it cure for a little bit. And if you want more movement, a little less time, if you want less movement, and I'll show you some examples of this in a minute, a little more time of curing, but I wouldn't go past that 20 to 30 minute time or the ink's not going to sink down in there at all. It starts to get hard too fast. Okay, so I'm using those blues that we showed in that inspiration photo. So this is the transparent dyes by Color Pour Resin and these are really nice to use together because they already have a little color family going on, right? So they all feel good together. There's a fourth one that I didn't bring with me today that I'm not going to use. And so I just take the lids off of these and this is super easy. And we're just going to kind of start doing a pattern of color, dropping it straight in the resin. And these are going to sink a lot faster than they would have if I would have had the time to allow for the resin to cure a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to take white dye and put it on top. So this is the transparent dye. You can use the transparent or the opaque, just depending on the look you want to get. And this is going to, the white dye is a little bit heavier than the transparent colored dye. And so it pushes it kind of to the bottom. And you can see that starts to move and ripple on its own. It's really pretty. And really, you can experiment with this. You can go all over every which way. And I'm just gonna drop it right down on top. And that's gonna create some of those blossoms. I'm actually going to go back again over these. So you can go again. You can layer multiple times on the same drops over top the white. It's really fun to watch it. It's very satisfying. I'm going to do some darker blue in here too. So this is a navy. So I've got kind of two colors of teal going on. Add some blue in. Already looks pretty, right? The fun thing about this is you don't really know what you're going to get till you unmold it. It's another fun thing about resin. Kind of is a surprise in the end. Okay, last bit of white. Oop, squeezed a little too hard, but you know what? There aren't really any mistakes you can make other than maybe putting too many colors next to each other and getting kind of a mud. So remember those color families and your color theory from elementary school art, right? <laughs> High school art. Okay, so then I would just leave that and let it kind of just keep moving keep being fluid and I would let it cure for a full 12 to 24 hours so that it's completely, completely hard. And then I would mix another smaller batch of resin, just the same way I did, just clear resin and pour that in the final little bit of the mold. That's why I only filled it up part the way. When you drink, drop the ink down on like this, 
the ink kind of sits on the top just a little bit and it can kind of be tacky and you want to seal that in with a final clear layer so that's why after this cured for 12 to 24 hours i would leave it in the mold mix some more clear resin and then just pour that in the mold till it was full to the top and then let it cure again for another 12 to 24 hours and once that was done i'm going to try to carefully move this here's a trick that i do that i'll share but i don't have it with me i slide a piece of chipboard underneath it so you can kind of put your chipboard against your table and slide your mold off onto it and then you can move it and it doesn't spill. Okay, I'm just gonna slide that out of the way. Take my gloves off. Actually, before I take my gloves off, we have a little bit of extra resin right here. And I wanted to show you what I love to do with my extra resin is to use another mold, put my glove back on and do some fun things with it. So, I almost forgot. I hate wasting resin, so if I make a little too much, I always grab another mold and pour it in there. And this is one of my favorite mold sets to use. This is the earrings mold set. I don't know if you can see that here. I'll get it to a better angle there, there. And so it has all these different shapes of earrings that already have the little peg to make the little holes for your jewelry. And it doesn't take very much resin to make earrings and they're super fun. And for the holidays, this is an awesome gift and you can make it just while you're working on your other things. So I'm gonna grab another little cup because this time I'm gonna color my resin with a little bit of dye. I'm gonna do this leftover resin in two cups. So I have three total. Okay, so I'm gonna do a three part earring with these leftovers. Now I could probably get more than one pair of earrings out of this. I'm just gonna look down and make sure I'm doing this right. So, okay. So for the first one, I'm just gonna use this. Um, this is Color Changing Glitter by Color Pour and it's available at Michael's. And it's really awesome glitter because it kind of takes on two shades. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of like a blue and a purple at the same time or a teal and a blue at the same time and it comes in a stack of four different kinds and this one i'm going to do in this cup and this one is so color rich the glitter that i don't even have to put any dye in with it i just put the let me use one of my stirring tools my silicone tools to stir in my glitter and it tints it enough i don't know if you can see that but it tints it enough with just the glitter being so fine that I don't even need to put any color in it. You could add color if you wanted to, but I find with these color change glitters, I don't really need to, to get the look that I want. Okay. Set that to the side. Okay, and I'm gonna pour that one in, let me see what I did before, in this little half moon shape right here. The other thing that's great about these earring molds is that they come with a two, with two. So when you mix one color of resin, you can get your pair of earrings that are perfectly matched instead of having to like wait for that to cure and then try to get the same color again, which is hard. So because it has the two molds, you can do the pair at the same time. Okay. So you can see I'm kind of just letting that flow to the edges. See, I could get some more earrings out of that one. And again, I'm gonna hit it with my heat tool. Just to raise the bubbles up. Okay, then for the next part of my earring, I'm going to add a little bit of dye to this one. I'm just gonna drop it right into the cup. craft stick this time and you can stir it in just to incorporate it in there you can see my resin even though we mixed it all that long time ago is still pretty fluid i'll put even a little bit more in hey shannon oh, it's pretty color um, yeah Allie has a question she asked if she wanted okay. to add gold flakes to her coasters would she what what step would she do that before before or after she adds the dye oh you know what i forgot i was going to add some glitter to mine so it would be you could do it before or after. It doesn't really matter. Let me um, pour these earrings and then I'm going to grab that back because I forgot to show you the little glitter step. That was a great question. Thank you. That reminded me of what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> okay. I'm going to add some of this chunky 
Michael's glitter, that's like this holographic iridescent glitter right in there with the dye. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my craft stick this time. So I'm gonna show you some different ways you could do it. You could see that I could, the first time I kind of just squished my cup and poured it in. You can use these craft sticks to kind of help it go into the right spot. Or you can use your silicone tools, which are my very favorite. I love those. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna hit it with the heat tool again. I always do that just in case. Make sure, especially on earrings, it gets around those little posts that allow for you to add jewelry charm. Okay, then this last one, I'm gonna add dye again, but I'm gonna add a little bit of the white to it too. Get a creamier color. And when I pull out my video class magic earrings, you'll see that that's why I like having two because these colors won't be exactly, exactly the same. That's also kind of fun because everybody gets their own unique one. Okay, and I'm gonna do just this circle right here. So you can see I could keep going. I have enough little extra bits of resin that you could do some fun whole matching set of earrings or you could divide it into more little cuts at the beginning and then you would have the ability to mix in more colors okay so i'm just going to move these out of my way a minute and set these aside and we're going to come back to those later so i'm just going to slide those up there and come back to this geode okay so <clears throat> i have done it both ways. You can add your foil before if you want like a real defined line. Um, I am gonna use this kind of chunky vintage glitter and some fine glitter on this one. And I found that this chunky vintage glitter tends to sink down to the front just a little bit and kind of stay suspended in there. And I'm using this other silicone tool. Let me get it over my glove so you can see. So it has this little scoop. Can you see the little scoops? So some of them have little scoops on the end. They're awesome. And then I'm just going to sprinkle right in. And I found that this way, it kind of gets a natural look because it just kind of sinks in naturally into the resin as it's curing. And you could just sprinkle it across the whole thing. You could do veins. You could go around the outside edge. Really, whatever you want. Put a little bit more right here in this vein, this main vein that I'm making. Again, it's gonna be a surprise when we flip it out. Okay, and then the other glitter I used on these was this extra super fine gold. And it moves in there too. And then it makes the backs and the fronts pretty. So you could put this in before you do the dye. It, the dye will push the glitter down a little more when you drop it in. Okay, all right. All right, so that's how you do the glitter. So foil would be similar. I would just lay the foil in it right into the resin in the mold. Ooh, this one's gonna be exciting when we get it out because I've been moving it so much. Okay, so I'm gonna pull my gloves off and grab the ones that I did previously. So you can see these both already look really different on the back. We've got some with more glitter still on the back, some with the fine glitter on there and we'll just unmold them. And it's as easy as just, these I've already put the clear coat on, that second step. And there's our first one. Oh, it's pretty, it kind of looks like an amazing island ocean scene. And this was the second one I did just to see the difference. And there's that one. I don't know if that glare, if you can see or not, but. So this glitter I put on the same way I did that one after I had done the ink drops and you can see how it's moved to the bottom of the mold. Show you from above. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, they're really, really beautiful, really pretty, nice and free flowing feeling about them. And what I decided to do with my 
geode coasters was to use them as part of my Thanksgiving place setting. So think how pretty that would be like on a plate. And since we're having kind of smaller gatherings these holidays, most likely because of the craziness in the world, it gives us the chance to really make a beautiful table for a small amount of people. And they can each have their own coaster to take home with them from, or to use at home if you just do it with your immediate family. So this is foiled. It's a vinyl foil that I've cut out. That's my name, Shannon, with some, with my cutting machine. You could also use stickers. If you don't have a cutting machine, you could freehand write on this coaster with a paint pen if you have beautiful handwriting and want to do it that way. I like doing it this way because if I didn't give them to my guest, then I could just peel it off and use it again for something else. So I've already put cut and weeded that and I've put it on transfer tape and I'm just going to put it across straight onto my coaster. I'm just going to rub it with my finger. You can use a little scraper tool if you want to. And then I'm going to pull the transfer tape off, leaving the foil name. So you can see how pretty that is, how much that adds. I did one for my coworker, Jen, as well. So we'll do Jen's name on this coaster. And you can really kind of just play with where your glitter landed and decide where you think it looks good. And again, that's, I mean, that would work with little foil stickers if you wanted to. Do it that way. So then we have the coasters looking like that. I can show them to this camera so you can kind of see. Okay, and I wanted to show you a few more that I did before. And see, I did these all the same way and you can see how different they all turned out. There's that one. This one's really dark. Got a lot of navy in that one. So you can see they're all, that would make such a pretty table to have all of those coasters on the plates. And it, all you would simply have to do is set it in the center of a plate and it would look beautiful. You could do other color schemes if you don't wanna go the teal route. Um, a couple of others that we've done. This is one Jen actually did that is reds. And this one, she put a little less dye, so you can see there's more clear. You can kind of see through it a little bit. There's clear spots. And then this one is also the blue, but we kind of swirled it with one of the tips. So I just stuck my uh, silicone tool down in there and swirled the white around to get that look. So you could do it for anything, really. You could do them for weddings. I think it would be beautiful at a wedding to use those as part of a centerpiece or decor. Um, and then I wanted to show you another way of using the open coaster mold and use it as a tree ornament. Since we're coming up on the holidays, we, my family loves celebrating Christmas. And so my teenage daughters set up, they'd say November 1st is the beginning of the holidays. So they always like to set everything up. So right now is the time that we're working on figuring out what trees, what we're gonna decorate our tree with this year. And I thought these geode coasters would make beautiful tree ornaments. So I'm going to stick my gloves back on. Sorry, this is a little slow part. A new pair, I guess. These aren't very sticky, surprisingly. I'm usually super messy when I work with resin. Okay, so let's do another kind of coaster. Okay, again, I'm going to use my A and B. I'm going to use my measurements on this one to get the same amount. I'm going to go up to, I made a little too much last time. I'm going to go up to 20 on this line. This is just the same process we did before. We're going to put equal parts. A little bit more D. Okay. And then we're just going to pour them both into another little cup. 
I've used plastic cups, paper cups. They all work well, silicone cups for mixing. Hey Shannon, while you're doing that, we got some questions. Awesome. So uh, what's the difference between uh, using a powder color versus a liquid color when dyeing your resin? I use both. So on this next one, I'm actually using a powdered color. So you can see the difference. Um, they both work beautifully. The powders that I've used have tended to be more opaque. So if I really want a transparent look, I'll usually go with the translucent dyes just because I can get that translucent look. Um, but the pigments, the color pigments that are powders are also very beautiful. They, they have a really awesome shine to them. And I'm gonna actually use them on this next coaster. And so you can see the difference. See, I'm rushing my stirring, I'm getting big bubbles. It's okay, we'll work them out later with the heat tool. And Sarah asked, um, is it okay to use a hair dryer on low instead of a heat gun? You can, it will move your resin a little more and it's not quite as hot. So you could try it. I always say, give it a try. It will move, like if you do it after you have color in your, in your mold, it will move that color more because the force of air is stronger than a heat tool. It barely blows on a heat tool. It's just really uh, more about the heat. And the same with the resin, it's more about the heat that you need. So I've seen people actually like take a lighter and just hover the lighter flame across as well. And that works really well. Or one of those little um, butane torches that they use to like make the tops of creme brulee super yummy. Those little torches also work really well. I would probably go that route rather than a hair dryer. I have used a hair dryer before though when I was like really wanting my color of resin to really move like across a large tray pour when I was doing like an ocean scene and I wanted to get that wave look. That's when a blow dryer is really a great tool to use for that. Megan asked, would food dye work in resin? I've never tried it, but I don't see why not. These are alcohol inks. So if you have any other alcohol inks, those will all work. Um, I've never tried food dye. I don't know. I, I guess it could potentially, if it's water-based, maybe affect the um, hardening, the curing of it. But I would say try, try Try things out. If you wonder about things, try them out and try it on a little tiny something like one little earring. Just mix a tiny bit of resin and try and see what happens. And if you get a good cure, then hey, go for it. It's kind of one of those things you experiment with. It really is like science crafting. Okay, I think all my streaks are mostly gone kind of rushed this one, but I don't want to run out of time to show you guys everything. I don't know what time it is. What time is it, Stacy? It is 2.40 where I am. 40 minutes. Okay, away. perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Just so I don't make sure to not get to all the way to the end and show you everything. All right, so I'm going to divide this one and actually dye the colors before I pour them in here. So I've got a few more extra little cups. Oops, one of my curly hairs is trying to get in my resin. Oh, it's still there. See why I wear an apron? So I can just wipe my fingers on it, right? The best. I'm actually gonna do four cups. So I have my clear cup that I mixed in. Good thing I put a tablecloth down, getting all kinds of sticky. Okay, so I'm going to leave one of these clear, and then I'm going to color these other three. Okay, and these are powder pigment for dyeing your resin, and these are color-changing powder pigment. So like the glitter 
that could kind of give a cast of two colors. It's hard to see it when it's dry, but this is like a gold to black almost, gold to gray. And this one is a red to a gold. So they're really fun. And when, when they set and you look at the coaster when it's finished, you'll see what I mean, but they're really awesome. Uh, the, the color changing is really cool to look at because it does look like something you'd find in nature, which is why I love using them on these geodes. That nice shimmer. So I'm using my scoop, another scoop. It's a different shape scoop. And I'm just scooping up my powder and putting it in there. And I found it does not take very much of this powder. You do not need much. And I'm gonna mix it. Even when it's mixed into the resin, you start to see that color change a little better. Shannon. I'll show you that. Can you see that? It's got this nice pearl, shiny, pink, red to gold look. Yes, Stacy. We have some people who wanted to know if they could put a picture in their resin. You can. You just need to cover it with something first so that the ink won't bleed out into the resin. So you just print your photo and then do like a, a coat on it, like a layer of Mod Podge and allow that to dry. Um, when I've done it, I've just done it on the print side. So it could just be the, the one side or you could do both sides of it. Um, and then you can put the resin, you can pour it on it, you can float it in there and it will completely keep the ink in place so it won't bleed out into your clear resin. It's fun to put photos and things. Okay, so you can kind of see this one too. It's kind of gold to, I don't know, copper, coppery reddish. It's a funky color, but they look really good together. Okay, and then in this last one, I'm just gonna do some white. I don't know if you remember back from our inspiration photos, but a lot of geodes have white. Okay. And I'm actually not gonna mix that too much because I like the white in my geodes to be kind of streaky. So if you mix it really well, it'll fully incorporate and be a solid white. And this one I've got kind of like a white streaky thing happening. Okay. All right. So the first thing that I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna use these this vintage glitter again. You can see that. And it is kind of a chunky glitter. You can use all different kinds of things for your stones to get that stone look in a geode pour. I'm gonna use my, actually I'm gonna put a little bit of clear down first. So I'm gonna do my stones right here, right around the inner rim. You can do them wherever you want to, but I'm just gonna do them around the inner rim. So I'm gonna lay a little layer of clear down. I like to do that so that my stones um, have a buffer so that they, they don't come out the top and be rough on the top of my coaster. You can mix these straight into the clear um, and then just pour the whole thing with the rocks or glitter in it. And I'm not too concerned about it spilling over because it's gonna look great. I like to do it this way so I can maintain my clear gl glitter to add some more rings in a minute. So I'm just gonna keep sprinkling until you like it, just keep going. Okay, so you can do as little or as much as you like. And here's another awesome, so this tip of one of these silicone tools is really awesome for sweeping these guys back into place. So remember how I said not to worry about it if they kind of got out of the clear? I'm just gonna scrape those kind of back into place and sweep them back into place over there. Get them off the top here. If they move a little bit out into my other rings, I'm not too concerned about that because that's, again, it's not perfectly perfect. When you look at a geode, there's all kinds of interesting things happening with the stones. Okay, then I'm gonna start adding rings of color with my other two colors that I've made. So first I'm gonna do a white rim. And I like to do white or clear between colors when I do geodes. I find it just helps the colors kind of stay in their circles and get that more you know, sliced geode ring look. And I'm just, again, using my stick to do this. You could use your silicone tool as well. 
since I have so many sticks, I'm just using less. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with a red layer. I wanted to do kind of a red, gold, white for these ornaments. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a clear layer. I'll actually use a silicone tool for this one. And it, it's like I'm going kind of like almost right on top of the color. Actually, I might just pour it. With the clear, it's not, it doesn't have to be as precise because it kind of is the buffer. It pushes the other color back a little bit. And I'm gonna add the gold. This is pretty gold. This one I'm just gonna pour as well, right around the edge. I don't know if you can see. My hands are all in the way, I'm so sorry. Trying to get around the edge, so if as I move, you can kind of see. Okay, and I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not filling this mold all the way to the top. If I was doing a coaster, I would fill it all the way to the top, but I have found if I do that with the tree ornament, it's a little too heavy for my tree. And so you don't have to fill your coaster all the way to the top. You can do it a little bit shallower to make it a little lighter, depending on your, on your intended purpose of what you're using your finished piece for. I'm gonna go back in and add some more white. So you can kind of just start adding more rings, however you want. Now this one, since I put the color directly into my resin when I mixed my resin, I don't need to do that clear coat on top unless you want to do it, you don't need to because nothing is gonna, none of the dyes are gonna be exposed at this point. They'll all be encapsulated in that resin. So really, that's all there is to it, just working in circles. So if I had a bigger mold, I could go even more circles, out, 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 right? If I was using this kind of mold, you could put a cluster of rocks all in one place, and I'll show you a finished sample that's like that, that's really easy to use. Okay, so we have these leftovers. I'm just gonna clean up my space a tiny bit. But we're gonna put in an earring mold as well. So this one I would just let cure 12 to 24 hours again. And then I'm gonna pull my earring molds back over here. I'm gonna show you how to lay down some foil. So I'm gonna use the rest of my red and white to make some earrings in this earring mold. Okay, so I want them to be two colors. So I'm gonna start with the red and I'm gonna do one side at a time, but I'm gonna just put it kind of on the bottom portion of my mold. Okay, and I'm gonna come back in with my white and do the top. Make sure to get it all the way around that little post where the finding goes through, the jewelry hoop. Okay, and then I'm gonna take that little stick again, the little pointy end, and I'm gonna just dip it into my clear resin that I have reserved. And then I'm gonna grab my foil flakes. I broke my jar, so this is just in a cup, but these usually come in a little, a little jar like the glitter. And I'm just gonna pick up my foil flakes with that sticky end of my tool and kind of place them into my earring. You can do as much or as little foil as you like. You can kind of push it down in there, move it around, lay it on top of itself. You can kind of see, I kind of want this gold foil to run through. And so this is the same way that I would put foil into a geode. I like picking it up with a little bit of resin on my little silicone tool and then just being able to kind of push it down in there. I can also use this tool to kind of swirl the red and white together to get a more flowing line. And then you have that simple earring. And so I would just do that again on the other side so that I had a matching pair. And it's that easy. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull out my I want to save some time, so I'm just going to show you how to pour one earring, and I want to show you how our little ornament turned out. Oh, there's one more mold I wanted to show you using. Let me show you real quick. So these are the 
round bead molds, color pour round bead molds. And they're these, they're, they make these awesome little round molds. And I used a color pour resin syringe to just suck up some of my leftover resin. So you just put it in the cup, suck it up. This just gives you really, really good control of where your resin's going. This is just showing you another awesome little tool that's handy to have. Okay, so I sucked up some resin in my tool. And then I'm just gonna, my hands always shake when I do it, but it, I'm just gonna depress the depressor. Cause this is kind of a small hole at the top. And this allows me to just drizzle that in there without a lot of spilling. And I can take my silicone tool. These little molds are super fun. Don't let them intimidate you because they look kind of funky when you look at them. But you can even just get your syringe really close to it. And you just want to fill it all the way to the top. And sometimes I'll take the bottom and kind of squeeze it to get the bubbles out. Push all this in with my silicone tools. Okay, so that's how you use the syringe and the round bead mold. So I would keep going until I had them all the way full. And that is another fun mold to use when you're um, using your leftovers. My earrings, I don't know if you can see those. Those are all the round beads. So those were all done with leftovers too from my leftovers from my geode coasters. Okay. Now I'll show you how these turned out. So here's the ones that I made earlier. So this one I did with a lot of red in it. And this one I did mostly just gold and white. And so you can see I only filled the mold halfway and we'll turn them out and see how they look. So there's that one. The back's pretty too. So you really could decide which side you like as your front or back best. And here's the gold one. Then my little round beads that I made before, they're fun to pop out. They tend to fly everywhere. I'll try to keep them on the table. So there's my little round beads. You can see that color changing shine in there is really fun. So to make an ornament, I would just pop out these beads. I made some white ones too in the smaller ones. So there's two sizes that come with it. So there's the bigger versus the smaller beads. They're really fun little guys. If you get a rough edge, like I'm noticing on my white ones that this, I have a few little rough edges right here. You can just file that off super easy. So where the top of my mold was, I have a few little rough edges that if I was doing these on earrings, I'd wanna file those off. You can just use a little emery board and file it off. Mist it with a little water and then do it. And then you don't get dust everywhere. And then all I would do is take a piece of ribbon and thread it through my hole. I'm just going to kind of show you this quickly. I'm not going to actually put the whole thing together. And then I can add these beads to the top, however you like. Oops, they want to run away from me. Let's go. And so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. And then that ribbon would make the little hanger to hang on my tree. I think they'd look really pretty on a Christmas tree. And you just thread your ribbon right through your beads and tie a little knot. And then you could do all different in the same tones or you could do all different colors of geodes. You could go back to those pretty teals if that's what you wanted for your holiday tree or blues. They're really, really lightweight, really actually with only filling about half the mold. They're really lightweight. I don't think they'd even weigh down an, a real live tree if that's what you do for your holidays. Okay, so now the last thing we have to unmold, we have time. I didn't keep my clock near me today, is our earrings. <laughs> so these were the earrings that I made while I was making these other samples. And they just pop right out of the mold. This glitter is super fun. Look how shiny that is. Okay, so I've got all my little pieces. And then part of the fun of these is you can decide how you want them to go together. So you can stack them. These are the little arches. So like you could stack them like this and just put jewelry wire between them. Um, if you want it to go 
upside down, facing each other down like that, that piece on the bottom. Like there's a lot of different ways that you could configure the earrings and they would all turn out unique and pretty. And these are the ones that had the gold foil in them. I don't know if you can see those. They turned out really pretty. And then these make awesome gifts. Oh, I also made a couple of these dangle ones. So you can see there's all different shapes. So there is no wasted resin. Just keep one of these little molds on hand and then you have gifts just ready to go practically from making your other decor items. So I wanted to show you some of the other earrings I've made real quick from these same color families. And these, I just cut these little tags out um, on my Cricut machine, but look how easy that is to just make a little gift, make your own little earring card. But you, they also sell really cute little jewelry cards like this at Michael's on the jewelry aisle, and they have craft and black and white. They're also cute. So you could just pick those up if you don't have a cutting machine. But these were all done with the leftovers from these same projects. And you can see with that one mold, you can make a ton of different kinds of earrings. Here's the hoops. And that's just using silver foil on those. There are some that are just the round beads. These are actually blue down here. It's kind of hard to see in this light, but. And you can see, I also, you could cut shapes for your, like this is a hexagon card that I cut. And then here's some that are just all gold, just using that gold powder. And this one is the gold powder clear and the foil flakes. So what fun gifts, right? Great to give to your friends for the holidays or just to have on hand if you have a quick birthday gift you want to send out. They're easy to mail, super easy to make. Are there any more questions? Huh? I see one that says, does the mold have holes for the earrings? And it does. So these little posts, let me see if I can get this close to the camera. So see these little tiny little, they look like dots to you. These little, they're little posts that go all the way through. So then when you unmold it, you have the little holes. Let me find one that's easier to see, maybe the white one. So see that little hole? So it's already there. And if you do need, if you do like fill it too full, like this one I filled a little bit too full so it's solid on the front. I just use my drill, just my standard drill. I brought it with me in case we had time, but this is just a 1 8 inch bit on my drill. And I just put, I just carefully hold my earring from the side that does have a hole and just go right through it. Because usually I only am getting a, like a tiny little bit of a top layer on there if I've filled it a little too full. But that's really easy to do. It just takes a second. Any other questions? No, I think we're good. Everyone says thank you. Okay. They really love the class. Oh, good. Yeah, I encourage you to try it. Resin can seem a little intimidating at the beginning, but really it's just experimentation and fun and trying new things and start mixing small batches when you try those new things and then you you'll find what you love and you'll never want to stop it's awesome <laughs> it's so fun all right thank you so much thank you shannon thank you everyone for joining us yeah if, if you thanks everybody this, yes, thank you if, if you want to see this class again it will be available tomorrow on the michaels.com classes and on our youtube channel so. bye bye